Hello guys, in this video I'm going to talk about hypoxia and useful factor and its role in cancer metabolism. Um, so, let's talk about what is mean by HIF1. So HIF1 is hypoxia and useful factor slash 1. So what it actually breaks up into. So hypoxia means lack of oxygen. And if inducible factor, is, it, it, it comes to sense when we understand that HIF1 is composed of two of subunits or to form a dimer. So it's a full structure, one here and one there. So there needs to be two star subunits. First subunit constitutive is always there. It's not induced, it's not being regulated, it's not being controlled. But the other one that we really care, and it's the main induced, that, that, that is the main induced under the cancer, and et cetera, it's, in, it's HIV-1 inducible. It's induced under sleep forms, that's one of which is hypoxia. So let's now talk about normal cell or normoxia. So there are too many words here and if you don't understand them just stay stay um to the end of the video um in the upcoming slides i'm going to discuss them but the key point here is that in a normal or norm normoxia or normal oxygen level uh, we have hydroxylation addition of oh group at the heat one a how does this occur is that oxygen we recognize the alpha ketoglutrate of the enzyme known as prolyl hydroxylate or phd so what would that then do is that it would degrade uh, degradation via proteasome. So VHL von Hippel-Linde-Lange complex is responsible for allowing the HIF1A to be induced to, in order to be go and bind with HIF1B. And if there is an oxygen there, um, we're going to have this complex being degraded. And as a result, that we no longer form HIF1A. In his stress cell, however, we have a hypoxia, again, lack of oxygen. What would happen is that we have a reduced oxygen for hydroxylation. Therefore, we're not going to activate this polyhydroxylase enzyme, and therefore, we're going to have this VHL along this complex being accumulated. Okay, it enhances activity, and as a result of that, it would enhance the activation, activates the transcription of the HIF1A in order to be bound to HIF1B. So let's let's just go back and say why hypoxia occurs at the beginning. Why don't we have a hypoxia in a normal cell, right? So why is it necessarily targeting cancer cells? So we do have it in a normal cells too, but in cancer cells, it's very um, common. Why? Or tumor cells, if you wish. Why? This image, I hope, makes sense because tumor cells proliferate very, very more rapidly than a normal cell. Okay, they proliferate in an extent that can take up too many space, and as a result, that those that are surrounding environment will take the limited amount of oxygen because recall this oxygen is being there for normal cells okay normal cell require that minimum oxygen to survive however the tumor cells are not like a normal cell they proliferate so much so they they need the more oxygen as a result of that they need the more oxygen so they need a more mechanism for getting more oxygen otherwise they're not they're not going to survive so you can see if they proliferate so much rapidly in the center we have we don't have as many as oxygen to be transported, so they would die if you don't acquire a mechanism. If you don't acquire a survival mechanism, they would die because the most of oxygen would get to the surrounding. So one way they do that is by angiogenesis. So they would no vasculature uh, or uh, addition of new blood vessels to so make sure that the oxygen is um, transmitted adequately to the center because oxygen travels in our body by blood vessels. So this is the reference there. Now let's put it in a schematic, di schematic diagram. Again, PhDs or proliferative enzyme. Oxygen there recognizes the alpha ketoglutrate. Okay, active with PhD. PhD would uh, um, find this um, VHL along in this complex. It would find the. It would uh, hydroxylate the proline um, subunits. It would also ubiquinate the HIF1A, and therefore, um, it would upon doing this, it would target for proteasome degradation. So no longer we have the HIF1A to go on with the HIF1 and with the HIF1B. So, but in the absence of oxygen or hypoxia, what would happen is that we would have a reactive oxygen species. Again, they said along with the hypoxia, again, I was told you it's not the only source. Reactive oxygen, reactive oxygen species can be there, sucking it as well. That inhibit the PhDs. Okay, no, no oxygen would don't this would no longer be activated. As a result, that we're not gonna have a hydroxylation of P4O2. As a, therefore, and um, so we're not leading for proteasome. So then HIF1A can go on and bind with the HIF1B easily and form a HIF1A, HIF1 um, dimer, and then we go, can go to the nucleus and trans, transactivate the genes we're going to discuss in upcoming slides. Also, we have another protein factor 
factor inhibiting HIF1 or FIH. And what it does is that it, it um, similar to that, it would um, 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 hydroxylate the aspar aspargate um, amino acid. And as a result, it will regulate the activity of HIF1. But the key point I want you guys to take note is this part. So again, yeah. So this pre this hypoxia prevents this from being activated. No longer um, hardware exclusion is occurring, and therefore it's not going to lead the vaporization. And it would then go on and bind with HIF one B, and it would transactivate the genes. But now let's see, because it doesn't necessarily um, hypoxia is a thing that regulates activity of HIF one A. There are on another pathways that can actually do that, one of which is RAS, RAF, MAPK. So these are uh, oncogenes, okay? So oncogenes are genes that are becoming tumor cells, uh, or genes that become, as a result of activation, um, they have become cancer, so they proliferate so much. And these are all mostly due to growth factor. So this is actually growth factor pathway. So upon binding of the growth, growth hormone bind to a receptor, it would activate the RAS, this would activate the RAF, and this would activate the M mitogen activated something. I don't remember fully, but what it does is that this is, this is a kinase that would activate the transcription factors that can enhances the growth signaling process but we don't exactly know the mechanism but we know they play a role in enhancement and activity of HIF1A. So okay, they can again act similarly to the hypoxia over um, ensure that the HIF1A is present is induced to bind with HIF1B. We could also have, we could also have a tumor surplus gene such as um, phospho um, PI3, PIS3 not S, sorry, PI3K, or is a full name again, similar to the kinase one, and this would then activate the PTN or AKT genes. And what this ensures that so these are the tumor surface gene again, so this again would serve to enhance the presence of HIF1A, and as a result, of more HIF1A is present to be one with HIF1B, acting similarly to the hypoxia. Okay, so they're not gonna interrupt with the PHS and so but they. Key point is that they again make sure that the complex between HIF1A and HIF1A is formed, but the exact mechanism behind how they do it is not clearly known. We also have mute. We also have something else that is very important. So even we could have PHS enzyme being present, but we could have this um, VHL enzyme and um, change mutation is uh, occurred in subunit. That PHS may not um, recognize it. Okay, they may not recognize the PHL, even though they are there, but they not they may not recognize it because there is a mutation in subunit, nucleotide change, whatever. This ensures that the, this would not undergo proteasome degradation, even though the PHS enzyme are there and oxygen level is high. Okay. Yeah, so that's the case as well. So now let's see why is it matter? Why, why do we care about this? So we now caring about this step. Okay, so this HIF1 and HIF1, HIF1 A uh, uh, subunit and HIF1 B subunit are already there in constitutive inducible forming the HIF1 A HIF1. Okay, HIF1. So let's just say that in why it matters in cancer cells because they have found that they they overexpress in many cell tumors especially in regions of hypoxia, as I just mentioned. So breast, colon, lung, cervix, bladder, prostate, and ovary. Most of them have, not all, have shown to have this amount of um, gene activity, uh, presence of this gene and a protein in there, in that cell tumor. So let's look at this image and hope this would um, come. This would make sense to you. So this is the glycolysis pathway. I'm not gonna go through this, of course. But if you have a, if you have any um, problems, make sure to go through this. So this is the AK lectures image I put. So go through the glycolysis pathway. But at the end of the day, the glucose, what it does is that it's glucose entering to form as a pyruvate, so that it long it can go aerobically to the um, um, the Krebs cycle, which then go to the um, which then go to the electron transport chain in mitochondria and produces ATP. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's producing ATP, energy source. So HIF1, as you can see, changes the expression of many of these genes. So if you have many of these genes, so you're gonna go through this in a way higher, faster rate. So you're gonna produce ATP in a faster rate. 
And if you have a many cells in the in case of tumor, we have a many proliferation, you need to make sure that you have a lot of fast mechanism or fast mechanism to ensure that you produce as many as energy source as fast as possible. He funny he fun does that. So glycolytic enzymes, major driver of high glycolysis levels, e.g. hexokinase, glucose of fructose is phosphate, pyruvate, okay, so this makes sure to force the formula of this, pyruvate kinase M2, so um, like that, okay, so this enzyme that converts it, so it makes sure that these are occurring at a fast level, so that we can have, we can form pyruvate as fast as possible, so that it can, so it can, so the formation of the ATP is faster. Not only that, it also does act, pro, does activate the formation of the GLUT1 and GLUT3. So what are these? They are the GLUT trans, glucose transporter. Okay, glucose must enter the cell via something, and that is are these two specific channels that can effectively bind to the glucose and effectively allow it to bring inside the cell. So if you have a lot of tumor cells, you need to make sure you have a lot of glucose at this as a, at the at the um, shorter time as much as possible okay and this high amount of this would effectively allow you to do so now very important thing very important thing recall i recall i talked to you about this one angiogenesis so angiogenesis is vegf okay so this is the um, effectively gene that effectively allow for blood vessel growth so upon presence of hif one this will lead the way formation of the EGF. So you need this in order to be able to have a more blood vessel growth in order to go to the, to the hypoxia region to transmit the oxygen. So you can see how important the HIF1 is in terms of angiogenesis. And really, all of, this is all it is. So thank you very much for watching. Um, please like, um, subscribe, and share if you can find this video.